I'm the manager at Healthcare Staffing, which is the private pay arm of Care Solutions. And the reason I'm just mentioning that is because our company, not all companies do, but our company has what we call a skilled side, which is when you come out of the hospital and you need a VNA called Home Care Solutions, and a private pay side, which is called Healthcare Staffing. And the reason I mention that is because when you have a company that does both, they can really work together because I encourage people to get as much insurance covered services first before they go to private pay options. Unfortunately, Medicare will not pay for somebody to stay home and have 24 hour care. They're not gonna pay for that. In fact, all that Medicare will pay for through a VNA is one or two hours a week of assistance with a shower. So that's when we step in to cover those different times. So maybe Bay Path is covering these many hours and the um, Medicare is covering these many hours, but you still have to go to work. You still have children to take care of. You have other things too. So it's nice to have a trusted agency. And what does that mean to have a trusted agency? Um, I know we get to it a little bit further, but I, I'm a licensed social worker, and for me, I'm extremely passionate about teaching my aides to provide proper care for somebody who has dementia. And there's a lot of tools that you can learn to be a better caregiver. You can learn how to not have that resistance and the argumentative and things like that. What I teach my aides is, you go to where your wife is. You don't bring your wife into your reality. You need to step into their reality. And we talk about tips and techniques and ways to reapproach and redirect and step away and come back. And there's so many different things that you can learn about that. And actually, I will just mention one quick thing. I am teaching a class, a free class to family caregivers that are caring for someone with Alzheimer's. If you want to talk to me after the class, we go more in depth about that. So the things that I'm teaching my aides can also be taught to family caregivers who are caring for their loved ones at home. And by the way, the basis of that program was actually designed by the Alzheimer's Association. It's a great program mm -hmm. if you have time to do it. Yep. Um, and it's called the habilitation therapy because we always hear the word rehabilitation. When you're working with somebody with dementia, they're not going to relearn things that they've lost. That's what rehab means. So it's called the habilitation therapy, meaning let's work on the skills that we still have. Let's focus on what we can do, not trying to reteach the things that we've lost, because that will just be frustrating. It will be very, very hard for you. And I see a lot of frustration with the daughters, with the spouses, and you know, I see a lot of, um, you know, what do you mean you don't know who I am? And I was here yesterday. Why are you telling the staff that you haven't seen me in 10 years? And you know, all these things, it's very frustrating and you personalize it. So it's really to help you not personalize it. It's the disease process that we need to understand. So what's very important about helping somebody at home is really personalizing their care plan to suit them as an individual. And I was talking to Brenda, I think she, um, before I came in here, Brenda works for Art here, um, about, and Eric touched on it, it's called purposeful engagement. So, you know, oftentimes you walk into a unit that isn't, you know, maybe they're not trained very well in the curriculum, and you see a whole group of people all doing the same task. That's not always effective. So like at Tammy's program, the Pleasantries Day Health, you have a couple people over here doing this activity, a couple people over here doing that activity, and what that's called is purposeful engagement. So if you have a gentleman who is a, a military man, you know, are you gonna have him like, you know, shifting through a laundry basket with clothes and things like that? Or might something else be more engaging to him? Or if I have a mechanical engineer, or you know, somebody like that, that we, we would take apart a radio and they tinker with it and things like that. That gives him purpose. Maybe someone else worked as a secretary. I've seen this in dementia units where we would have, you know, Mary behind the counter 
just shifting through papers like she was at work, you know, and she loves it. It gives her, it gives her a feeling of purpose. And that's why they call the purposeful engagement. So what I do when I meet with families, I ask them, and this just actually, let's say two weeks ago, I was with a family, and I said, I want to know what we can do to enhance your father's quality of life when my aide is with him. So tell me about his hobbies, tell me about his history, tell me about his life. And the son's like, you know, he really doesn't have any hobbies because I'm, you know, trying to engage him like, you know, does he like to do puzzles? Does he like to do games? Does he like to watch certain shows on TV? Does he have a favorite, you know, uh, musician he likes to listen to? All these kind of questions to get people. And he's like, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. And I said, well, tell me a little bit about your dad's life. And he said, oh, well, he was really big in the Shriners and charitable and philanthropy is so important to him. And he loves his grandchildren so much. And he always had a, like, so I really, when you ask them to open up about that, they really get going. And like, they remember all the things that dad loved when he was active in the community. And I said, so for him, his purposeful engagement is for my aide to say, Tell me about your grandchildren. Oh, I see the pictures over here. Tell me about them. I heard that you do a lot of charity work. Can you tell me what the Shriners are about? And you see them light up. It's beautiful. But you know, if you didn't get that history from them and you just walked in and said, you know, so what did you do for work? You know, who know, you know, maybe he doesn't even remember what he did for work. But when you bring things up to them, it's, it's, a really, it's really beautiful. And so to customize a care plan based on the client's needs, you can't do that until you know that history, until you know about that person. Um, so for home care, with insurance covered home care, you don't get to really pick the days and times. You'll have someone call you that morning and say the aide will be there at three to help mom with a shower. And that's what happens. <laughs> with private home care, you might need, maybe you have your um, dad living at home with you and you want, you still have to work or maybe you take care of them during the day, but they're up a lot at night and they're agitated. So maybe I just want somebody to come in from like 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. so I can sleep. The hardest thing about being a caregiver is that burnout where you're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're not engaging in your own personal needs because it's always about them, like Eric said. So, you know, maybe you're a better caregiver if you actually sleep at night. So that's a good, you know, option for some people. Other people is, you know what, dad goes to a day program. I need someone come to the house from 7 to 9 in the morning to help him get up, dressed, ready, and put on the bus. And that's a way. And then I work. Or maybe I just need someone 4 to 6. Whatever you personally choose when you're paying private care, you know, our wish is your command. Whatever you want is what we do. And that's a nice benefit, too, of having the private care. But we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at all times, you know. And a lot of times I have somebody say, oh my God, the, the hospital just told me mom is coming home tonight. What do I do? You know, and a lot of times we do get those kind of crisis calls. And our goal is to put the person at ease, reduce their stress, and say, no problem. We'll have someone there at six. And I'll go to the hospital, I'll meet with them, I'll get everything set up so they feel at ease. And it's nice to have, I go to 99% of what I call my starts of care. So every time a client calls or a new person looking for business, if they, like I need some help, whatever, I'm there. I'm at the hospital, I'm at the facility, I'm wherever they are, I meet them, I meet the family, I put together. Then the day we start, I go back and introduce the aid to them. Are you comfortable, you know, you, and I call it SeniorMatch.com because I do a really good job at matching the right aid with the right client. And that chemistry is very important to create success. Once in a, a thousand times, we might have someone that just, you know, it's kind of like we don't click. So we make a change. It's, you know, it's not that hard. We, we're very fluid. Um, so again, and I talked about that respite, you know, if you're a caregiver and you just need a break. I have a lady right now, she goes, I just want to go to the hairdresser on Fridays. So we have someone that comes from 12 to 3 on Fridays, and that's, that's her like little spa day for herself. So paying for private home care, I already talked about Bay Path Mass Home Care Program. Long-term care insurance, I'll just one quick thing. If you have long-term care insurance, the typical policy, everyone's policy is like a gazillion different policies. But let's, for example, say that your policy will pay for $150 a day of at least two or three ADLs, which Art had mentioned, the bathing, dressing, grooming, activities of daily living. 
Um, so what we do is we have a flow sheet that our aides check off. On this day, I helped you know, Mr. Smith with a shower, with toileting, with dressing, with companionship. I did his laundry and blah, 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 the whole thing. And then the family submits that to the long-term care insurance and then they get reimbursed. So that's a really nice um, option for a lot of people. But not everybody really jumped on the long-term care insurance wagon. I'm getting, the more years that I do this, I'm starting to get more and more that have it now because it really was only, I would say, popularized about like five to 10 years, in the last five to 10 years. So more people, huh? Oh, I have 30 seconds. Okay, real quick. So the question is that. Agency versus private home care. I'm on the board of directors for the Home Care Aid Council of Massachusetts, and one of the things that we talk about is if you're hiring somebody out of Craigslist, just be careful, be alert, be aware. Questions you want to ask, you know, when you hire a bona fide agency, they're going to pay your payroll taxes, their social security taxes, their license, they're bonded, insured. If that aid hurts your loved one and you just pluck them out of Craigslist, who's going to pay for that? If they steal something, what's your repercussions? What's, what can you do about that? If they hurt themselves on your property, what's going to happen then? So these are things to think about. The Home Care Aid Council of Massachusetts has a wonderful brochure that talks about when you're hiring on your own versus hiring from a bona fide agency. Massachusetts does not regulate private home care companies. This is key. So you want to find a company whose standards of care are up here because they're doing the right thing. Not because someone's telling them that they have to, but we are a Medicare certified company, so we have higher standards anyway. But those are the things that you definitely want to ask. Are they licensed, insured, accredited? What's the employment process? Do they do background checks? You as an individual don't have the opportunity to do criminal background checks and driving record checks. And um, anyone can go onto the office of the Inspector General and see if there's ever been any fraud against that license. I do that every month on every one of my aides. And um, it's labor intensive for sure, but you know what? I want to make sure the aids I'm putting in your home, you know, aren't fraudulent or things like that. Um, no, we Melissa, do. I want to be able to close with one example, so okay. you have to stop. Okay. Okay. You have to stop. So I'm done. <laughs> if she you stopped. have any questions, let me know. So now, isn't she great? And, and she's gonna and she's gonna take um, she's gonna take questions afterwards because there's gonna there's, there's the break. But I just wanted to give you one example. So I've got a wonderful woman. She's 86 years old. She lives in Marlboro. She was unaware of any of these programs. She's, she had spent down literally all of her money. She had her house left that's worth about $200,000, $250,000. Her only alternative was nursing home. She's still mentally fine. She's physically disabled. She's got some serious problems, right? We have now, we got her a reverse mortgage so that she's got now a reserve of about $120,000. We qualified her for uh, um, the frail elder waiver, so she's getting 35 hours a week paid for by Mass Health. She now has enough extra cash, because her income is about $2,500 a month, to pay for the extra home care that she needs, the extra home care that MassHealth isn't going to be able to manage to pay for. She's going to be able to die and be buried in the backyard. She's going to, she has enough resources now to stay in that house for another 10 years. She thought she had about four months left. The point is, you can figure this out. If you want to stay home, you can figure it out. And if that's where you want to be, that's where you should be. Thank you very, very much. I'm sorry I ran a few minutes over. Now, that's okay. get a good attorney to go yep. through that process. Yeah, that so, too. That's important. Thank you all. I'm sorry that I ran over on you. Those are all right. Right.